Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. At the end, we're gonna tell you how to get 10% off and show you some of the really cool things you can do with a Squarespace website. Friends is a show with six main characters, but if you had to pick one protagonist, the one who really takes the biggest journey over the 10 seasons, you'd probably choose Rachel. Yes. The series starts with Rachel Green making a choice that will define her entire life. Welcome to the real world. It sucks. You're gonna love it. She runs away from the wealthy but passionless existence she could have had with her orthodontist fiance, who Barry. Had 945? And she seeks out a life of uncertainty. She embraces being a regular 20-something. Oh, I wish me luck. What for? I'm gonna go get one of those job things. This down-on-your-luck, no-frills lifestyle is a given for the other friends, and they're sometimes disenchanted with it. They're starting to maybe feel that longing for marriage, children, having a bit more money, and the end of this unpredictable stage. Rachel certainly struggles with whether she could have made a mistake. <laughs> is either getting married or getting pregnant or getting promoted and I'm getting coffee <laughs> and it's not even for me. <laughs> but she chooses this life because she doesn't want to live some numb, lukewarm life in the suburbs. Even if that means she has to brave a lot of new lows. Today, it's like there's rock bottom, 50 feet of crap, then me. So more than any other character, Rachel embodies the value of experimenting, failing, and striving in your 20s. And mom, I realize you and daddy were upset when I didn't marry Barry and get the big house in the suburbs with all the security and everything, but God, this is just so much better for me, you know? Slowly but surely, she finds her feet in her career. What? Falls in and out of love, mostly with Ross, and gains independence. Rachel proves that the choices we make at this age can completely transform us. She changes from spoiled princess to savvy executive and put together mom. And the person she's become is thanks to the many missteps and lessons learned. And even more than that, thanks to the friends she's found. So we can say that Rachel is the true protagonist of Friends because she most demonstrates the message of the show. That we grow into our best selves by investing in our friends and accepting the messiness of our young adult lives. Besides being the missing piece of the friend group at the beginning, Rachel is also our proxy. We enter the world of the show through her. The pilot is framed around her personal journey as she moves in with Monica, finds a job at Central Perk, and cuts herself off from her family's financial support. In fact, the whole first season is focused more on Rachel than any other individual, as she adjusts to this new way of life. For it, and it was totally not worth it. <laughs> Who's FICA? Why is he getting all my money? So from the get-go, it's a story about Rachel finding herself and coming of age. Gunther, I quit. Friends can get criticized for offering a sugar-coated, lily-white version of 20-something life. But Rachel does face a lot of classic, universal problems, from financial strain... I will have the uh, side salad. And what would that be on the side of? ...to dead-end jobs... Bloomingdale's eliminated my department. <gasps> ...to the trials of apartment hunting. And we see how invested the other friends are in her progress. Wow. The reason they, and we, care so much is that everything feels like a big first in Rachel's adult life. Look! I cleaned! I did the windows, I did the floors, I even used all those attachments on the vacuum, except for that little round one with the bristles. She seems to see everything with new eyes. She's earnest and enthusiastic even as she experiences something like doing laundry for oh the first God, time. Mm -hmm. There isn't anything I can't do. We we won! Won! Even as the show goes on and Rachel becomes less of an ingenue, she maintains this lovable, sometimes clueless streak. So we relate to her drive to try new things, as well as her tendency to stumble. I misread him, and I, uh... I wasn't supposed to put beef in the trifle! Rachel's oblivious parents and vain sisters represent what she could have become if she'd stayed in her bubble of privilege and security. You didn't marry your berry, honey. But I married mine. We also get the alternate reality, where we see the bored, dissatisfied housewife version of Rachel who did marry Barry. She's an altogether shallower and less interesting person. <laughs> I love you on that show. No. I watch you every day. I mean, when you took out your own kidney to save your ex-wife even though she tried to kill you. <laughs> Sometimes we do see the effects of Rachel's upbringing, when she acts entitled or self-involved. But ultimately, she's rejected that life path. 
and we recognize that it takes guts to let go of everything you know and face the judgment of your peers. While Rachel's new life delights us, it doesn't always look great to outsiders. What that Rachel did to her life, we ran into her parents at the club. They were not playing very well. Mm. I'm not going to tell you what they spent on that wedding. Still, we see from her mother's envy that Rachel escaped a deeply unfulfilling life. In the long run, she dodged a bullet. You know, I never worked. I went straight from my father's house to the sorority house to my husband's house. I am just so proud of you. So Rachel's plots are a stand-in for us and the trials we experience. But Rachel, the character played by Jennifer Aniston, is also the most aspirational friend. Her story is a classic upward arc. Young woman comes to the big city, works hard, and makes a name for herself. And then there's her wonderfully 90s fashion and the Rachel haircut, which shaped a generation. She's beautiful, sweet, and sometimes scatterbrained, a lot like the heroine of a romantic comedy. Every and her relationship time. with Ross is one of the most hyped TV pairings ever. Ross and Rachel. Rachel and Ross. Uh, <laughs> that's been one heck of a seesaw, hasn't it? <laughs> what? Friends prove that there's something really satisfying about pairing the stylish girl next door with the good-hearted, nerdy guy. The long buildup starts with Ross pining after Rachel, then her falling in love with him when he's seeing someone else. Rachel's discovering her new attraction to Ross shows how much she's matured. In high school, she looked right through him. So being able to see the value of Ross's love is a sign that she's become a deeper, more genuine human being. But even after Ross finds out about her feelings, they don't get together because Ross makes a list of her bad qualities to help him choose between her and Julie. Kind of ditzy. Oh, too into her looks? Spoiled? Now that's a little spoiled. He was supposed to type little, the idiot. <laughs> <laughs> just a waitress? At first, we and Ross think that this is just a fight that she'll get over. But Rachel is dead serious. Because her whole new life is about the conscious choice not to be the spoiled, shallow, rich girl others see her as. She refuses to be with someone who doesn't see her true potential. Now how would you feel if the one person that you trusted the most in the world not only thinks them too, but actually uses them as reasons not to be with you? It's only six episodes later, which is long in Friends time, that the prom video gets Ross another chance because it helps her realize how true his love is. See? He's her lobster. <laughs> Briefly in parts of season two and three, we actually get to see the couple happy together, which is great for a bit. Do I look fat? No. But at this point, Rachel still doesn't have the rest of her life together at all. Ross, you have planned out the next 20 years of our lives. We've been dating for six weeks. They break up after the infamous We Were On A Break fiasco. I thought we were broken up. We were on a break. And we'll never all be able to agree on whether this counted as cheating or not. But Rachel can't forgive him. I can't. You're a totally different person to me now. I used to think of you as somebody that would never, ever hurt me. Ever. When you rewatch this season, though, it's clear that this event is the symptom and not the real cause of their separation. Just before this, Rachel finally starts making a little progress in her fashion career, and Ross really isn't handling it well. His misguided jealousy drives them apart. Ross! Ross! And we wonder if his jealousy is less about Mark and more an immature reaction to the fact that she now has something substantive in her life besides him. As much as we'd like Ross and Rachel to be together, at this moment, they're not in the same place. Their breakup is a defining moment for Rachel because up to this point, it seemed like she was on track to having it all. So this step backward is a reminder that her journey is about learning to assert herself rather than having her needs taken care of by someone else. Can't look fat in an X-ray. Over the following seven seasons, the show teases us with false starts and restarts and the constant will they or won't they dynamic. I just don't see why those two can't work things out. The timing is always off. With us, it's never off the table. I'm still in love with you. They can't quit, but they can't commit. He's going in. Look, I don't know if anything is ever going to happen with us again, ever. But I don't want to know that it, it never could. Ultimately, it's no accident that they need all of this time apart. Their years as friends rather than lovers turn out to be crucial. Rachel needs to build a truly independent identity and a great career. 
And Ross needs to see Rachel in a more balanced way that's free from the obsessive, possessive feelings that were left over from his high school crush. Just can't believe I'm in Rachel Green's room. Both Ross and Rachel come into their own as individuals before they can make it work as a couple. Rachel's story is about doing the scary thing and letting go of the safety net. You need the fear. She strikes out on her own and pushes herself to take risks. I just don't want to be 30 and still work here. Yeah, that'd be much worse than being 28 and still working here. When she realizes her job at the coffee house is going nowhere, she decides to quit, even though she has no backup plan and no other real work experience. I don't care. This is not what I want to do. So I don't think I should do it anymore. She goes after her career in fashion, even though it seems like a long shot. Waitress at a coffee house and uh, cheer squad co-captain only took up so much room. Buddy Chandler, you're a funny guy! And we see her gradually climb from her first dud of a job. Position punch trick. You got it, you got the job. To a better position at Bloomingdale's and to major success at Ralph Lauren. She's gone from being lost and unsure to getting real joy out of her work. My work, it's, it's for me, you know? I'm out there on my own and I'm doing it. And it's scary, but I love it because it's mine. We wouldn't have guessed that the Rachel we know in season one had the ambition and skill to reach this level. And that's what makes her achievement so fun to watch. She surpasses our expectations. Rachel passed that first test of moving to the city with no husband, no money, and no job. So after that, nothing can really be too scary again. And this doing what scares her is what leads her to a fulfilling life. There's an important lesson in this for all of us, that if we commit to what we want and decide that we're really more than others see in us, in the end, we'll get there. Rachel pushes herself to do scary things in her personal life too. You know what? I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna call him up and I'm gonna ask him out. Yeah, I can do that. When Monica and Chandler move in together, she has to leave Monica's protective care and the only New York apartment she's ever known. But she thrives in her new roommate situations. And when she gets pregnant with Ross's baby after a one night stand, she rises to the occasion as a mother, even though she thinks she can't do it. You know, when you first came to the city, you were this spoiled, helpless little girl who, who still used daddy's credit cards, remember? I hope you're going somewhere with this. <laughs> Look at you. Look at you. You're this big executive. You are much more capable than you give yourself credit for. As the show goes on, Rachel continues to feel self-doubt and underestimate herself. And from now on, you make all of my decisions for me. But her strength is her ability to roll with the punches and stick with it. At the end of the series, it's a surprise when she chooses to restart her relationship with Ross and not take the amazing job in Paris. It might seem like a case of choosing love over career. I got off the plane. But it's actually a perfect reversal of the pilot episode. The show started with Rachel running away from a life she was supposed to want but didn't. So it's fitting that after all of the ups and downs, she's finally ready to claim the loving relationship she knows she does want. And she's arrived at this place through the hard work she's put in to prove her worth and stand on her own two feet. I stopped and I said, what if I don't want to be a shoe? What if I want to be a, a purse? Hey guys, this is Susanna. So as you know, this video was sponsored by Squarespace. Thank you, Squarespace. I actually have personally used Squarespace multiple times. It's my go-to whenever I need a website. And what I love about Squarespace is that whatever you do, the site just immediately looks beautiful. You just can't actually mess it up. It's so easy to use, customizable, and it's just really actually very fun. Um, so I look at it this way. You know how they say dress for the job you want? Well, Squarespace is like dressing your online persona in designer clothes at a really affordable price. Squarespace's award-winning design is going to present you and your work in the best possible light. The trial is totally free. So click the link in the description below and start your free trial today at squarespace.com and go to squarespace.com slash screen prism to get 10% off your first purchase. Thanks for watching, and if you like our videos, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Just click this link here. We spend a lot of time making these videos, and every little bit helps. And of course, the very best thing you can do is subscribe to our channel to get access to all of our latest videos.